This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, welcome everyone. Tonight is our uh, last year on Sefer Torah Devorah. It's been a, really a uh, great honor and zchus to learn the Sefer, and the Rebbeinu Shem should give us the Atta Deshmaya to remember, understand, and uh, implement a little bit of what we learned. Okay, we want to give a big Asher Kayach to Rav Nassim Mudler, who um, took copious notes throughout, and uh, this is not, this is Sefer Dev- Tarm Devarah Executive Summary, and this is from Rav Moshe Cordovero. This is, uh, and whatever a little bit we understood from it. Okay, so we begin now with Parak Aleph. Parak Aleph outlines the Yurgim Omidus Harachimim, which are number one, Mikel Kamoicha, Hashem's tolerance that He continues to bestow upon us even when we use that to sin. Number two is Noisei Avain, God Himself bears the iniquity, Arkadei Kach, that even though when we sin we create an angel, God not only gives to us, but He supports the angel until we do tshuva. Number three, He's over Al Pesha, He Himself corrects the wrongdoing, wipes it away, so likewise, we should also go out of our way to correct the wrongdoing that someone else did. L'Sheiris Nachalos, so Yibon Shalom says, you are so close to me, you're like my wife, you're like my child. When we're in trouble, God is in trouble. And that means... Hashem feels that we're a part of Him, and likewise we should feel connected and a part of every Jew. We should feel the tsar of another Jew, the happiness of another Jew. And that's the reason why when ten people get together, they get schar keneged. The first ten people get schar keneged meah, because each one of them has a piece of the other ten. And that, the term of the verse said, is the reasoning of Kal Yisrael Arim Zelazeh. Number five, that even when Hashem has cause to continue to be angry as a midah, that He stops the anger. Number six, even when we're undeserving, God could hone in on a small act of chesed that we do. So likewise, if somebody did us a favor, or somebody did someone else a favor, or any other good quality that somebody may have, one should focus in on that and say that alone is enough for us to be merachim on them, and especially when it comes to one's spouse. Spouse, Yosha Virachamino, that is the Midan Hashem has, that when a person does tshuva, God elevates them to a relationship even greater than they had before. Likewise, when somebody makes an attempt to mend ways with us, we should feel even closer to them as if um, had they never sinned to begin with. Yichboy Shavayin God squelches sin, which means that even though mitzvahs flourish and rise up and have make a Im- big impact in heaven, nevertheless when it comes to sin, God downplays it and He does not allow it to make an impact in Shemayim. Ad Kedei Kach, that's the reason why the Rebbe does not allow a mit- an Avera to wipe out a mitzvah. The Sashlech B'mtsuas Yom Kolcha number 9, and that is even if Hashem has to be ma'or midas hadin on us, if we repent, God throws that midas hadin on the Rishayim. That's why Paroi got punished after Hashem decided to um, be merachim on us. So likewise, when somebody does tshuva, we should realize that the midas hadin has been removed from him and we should not hate him anymore. Tite nemes Yaakov, that is the following midah. There are people who don't go above and beyond the letter of the law, but nevertheless, they do what they have to do, and that warrants a certain yashrus of rachamim. God is, deals with them barachamim, b'yashrus. So too, there's a certain justice that uh, a person should have the right that we should be merachim on them. Number 11, there are those people who go lufnim mishrus adim, God shows them special rachamim, and therefore we should so, show a special chesed and rachamim to tamini chachamim. Number 12, there are people who have no redeeming qualities other than the fact that the Rebbe Hashem is merachim on them because of the zchus of their avos. Likewise, even complete rasham, we should be merachim on them because in the zchus of their forefathers. And finally, there's a midah of mime kedem, and that is, when they were first born, before they started wailing and annoying everybody, they were good for exactly at least a split second, so that is a redeeming quality that everyone has. So now we begin the ten spheroids. The first sphera that was discussed was the sphera of Kesar. Kesar is the top sphera. It is the sphera that is closest to Hashem, and it is therefore embarrassed to look back at the Ma'atzil, and it's always looking down. So therefore, Kesar is primarily characterized as Anivos. And there are eight ways with one's limbs that one could try to emulate the meat of Kesar. Number one, with one's head. The same way Kesar is always looking down, one should always look downward to make himself tolerant and humble. And Hashem feeds all. So therefore, and is always mative, nothing is beneath Hashem's dignity to be mative, likewise us. So that is, number one, I would say Kesar in the head. Number two, in one's thoughts. One's thoughts, one should... Um, 
One's thoughts should always be occupied lahitiv to benefit others. One should not have anything indecent in their thoughts. One's thoughts should always be occupied in Torah because Kesar is what is called the Chachma Kaduma, the Said Chachma Kaduma, and always occupied in the greatness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. One's forehead, the, metz, the Mitzchai, one's forehead should be emulating the forehead of the forbearing God, always trying to appease and assuage even if somebody is angry against you. And this is... Uh, done, like it says over here, from wisdom. Number four, one's ears. One's ears should be inclined to hear good. One should not want to hear anything indecent, only to uh, in, inclined to hear that which is good, just like the ears on high. One's eyes. One should not look at anything indecent. One should only see the downtrodden and think of how to be merachim on them. One's nose. Like Hashem's nose is ba'apay chayim v'ratzayin, one should eliminate from one's nose any hakpada and anger, and there should be a desire, the Tama Devara said, to try to fulfill everyone's request. Number seven, one's face should always be radiant, like a Kaddish Baruch Hu's face, as Rabbi Sol Salantar said, one's face is a Shusarabim. And number eight, one's mouth should always pour goodness, Tyra, goodwill, nothing indecent, no curse or anger, like the mouth on high. Then we go to. Okay, that, that, so we're still in the Midah of Kesar, and that is now there are times that a person cannot uh, um, utilize this Midah because there are times of Gevura, but especially Yom Tov, Shabbos, Yom Kippur, tf- during Tefillah and Torah, well, that is the, the, uh, the appropriate time for the Midah Sa Kesar. Now the way, since Kesar is mostly defined by Anivos, take the following medication to acquire Anivas, which is not valuing yourself at all, consider yourself the lowliest of creation. Number one, train yourself to run away from honor. Number two, accustom yourself to thinking on your de- about your deficiencies. Number three, realize that uh, about um, think about your averos, and the best remedy is insult because it doesn't take away money or health. In addition to that, there's another potion to take, which consists of two elements, and that is number one, honor all creations. And number two, train yourself to love people. We go on to the third Mida, which is Chachma. Now Chachma has two parts. It's looking up toward Kesar, it's looking down to the lower Midas. Likewise, one should have time for study and contemplation, and time for teaching others. Now, there are five parts of Chachma. Number one, one's Chachma should be spread over everyone and everything. If One should try to share as much Chachma with uh, as many people as possible, whether it's one's friends, neighbors, family, and so on. That's sharing Chachma to all. Number two, always thinking, think about other Jews to benefit them, to bring Jews closer. Think thoughts about Hashem. Uh, for Hashem and His people. So Chachma is always contemplating the needs of others to try to be native to them. Number three is uh, the next dimension of wisdom, the fact that wisdom is a source of life. One should be a fountain of life to everyone in this world and the next world. Number four, one should be a loving father. Since everything comes from Chachma, be a father to all of creation, especially Kali Yisrael, pray and daven for those in need. Like Moshe Rabbeinu was told that yes, you do have a responsibility as if you bore this nation. Recover the forgotten Jews. Be a merciful father. And finally, number five, um, be merciful to all of creations. Don't disgrace anything. Hash- a Rebbe was punished for not having mercy on a cattle. Don't uproot something that is growing. Don't kill just uh, for no reason. Number four, I'm going to summarize very briefly. And that is the Midah of Bina. Bina is tshuva. It fixes everything at its source. Just like Bina sweetens all dinim and nullifies the bitterness. So one who thinks thoughts of tshuva is actually inserts um, the midah bina into all of his days. By doing so, he's infusing the midah bina into his day. Tshuva brings everything back to its root, benefits even the evil aspects are rectified. Even the bad aspects are rec- rectified. Number five, parak five is chesed. Now, one should love HaKadosh Baruch Hu to the greatest possible extent and put Avodah Hashem first and fit everything in afterwards. Now, th- uh, consider that even difficulties are a sign of Hashem's love. Gamzu Latava means even this, even Midas, what seems to be Midas Hadin, is really coming from Midas HaChesed. And therefore, there are eight ways of doing Chesed which effectuates the Elyonim. Number one, when a child is born, you have to do Chesed to the to the Vlad. So, Bina, when it gives birth to Tiferes, Tiferes could come out with Sada Din. You want it to come out with Sada Chesed. So, when you do Chesed to a baby, you're basically influencing Tiferes to come out with Sada Chesed. Basically, all mitzvahs are included in this. That's number one. Number two, Mila. When you do Mila, 
corresponding to that, you should remove all extraneous elements of um, of the Earl of the Yisoid. All extraneous elements of Yisoid. You want to remove all the foreskins of the hearts of people. That's why Pinchas was Zoycha to Kahuna, because he did Chesed by being Malchal Yisrael. Visiting the sick. When we visit the sick, we uh, effectuate that in the heavens. Who is, who is sick in the heaven? Uh, the Rebunisham, so to speak, is love sick. Hash, the Shechina is a Chayla. Even Kutshabrichu is out of its place. And by doing chaz, by, by being Mavakar Chaylim, you are, being mava, you are uh, visiting the Chaylim in uh, the sphere, namely the Shechina and Kutshabrichu. Number four, giving tzedakah. The Ani, who are the Aniyim in the Sphirois, Yesoid and Malchus? How do we give them Tzedakah? Tzedakah is 90 Amen, Sadi, Dalit, 4 Kedusha, is Kuf, 100 Brachais, and 5 Chamisha, Chamshe, Torah, Achnosis, Orchim. When you invite guests, you're doing Chesed to the Orchim and Shamayim. They are Tiferes and Yesoid, and you give them a home in Malchus. Who else? Uh, those, you're doing Chesed from, by learning Torah. You are doing chesed, you're causing Tiferes to reside in Malchus. Tiferes, by the way, is Yaakov Avinu, Malchus is Rachel. You give them Achila, that is sweetening, Gevurais, Shasia, you're tying Tiferes to Malchus. And uh, the Talmud Devar added an important point that you should try to articulate when you're doing it what you're, what you're accomplishing. Now, Eisek HaChayim Ames, is that is sometimes a... Uh, Sometimes a, a various sphera is concealed and disappears. One has to rectify and cleanse it with good deeds. Carry them on your shoulder. One should focus on the secret of the burial. When, when you bury someone, you should have in mind the possible of Yikbar Isai Bagai. Bagai is referring to the 13 meters of Rachman. Number 7, Achnos Kala. Um, you want to be machnes the kala to the chasan. This is uh, primarily accomplished through our davening, through our prayers. We're able to connect the various ilamas uh, when we do so. For through the various parts of davening, and finally, Hava Shalom bin Adam Chaveroi, that's Tiferes and Yisoid, sometimes they drift apart. Yisoid could go to the left, Tiferes to the right. You want to keep Yisoid to the right. That is Mida number uh, five. We go to Parak six, Gevura. So a person is created with two inclinations. Yetzer Toiv is Lechesed for oneself, and the Yetzer Hara was only created for one's right, for one's wife. Tiferes is the Baal Chesed to the right, Nekeva's Midas HaGvura. You don't want to arouse the Yitzhahara for oneself, because if you do, you're Ma'ayra Gvura is in Shamayim. One should not be Ma'ayra the Yitzhahara for Bia, for Mamayin, for Kas, for Kavayd. Only Yitzhahara is only Le'ishtai. And you do it Benachas, to clothe her, to fix your house. When you take care of your wife, you should be mechavin, you are being mesakin, the shechina. All household repairs are tikune shechina. When your wife asks you to fix the pipe, the first thing you do is you call the plumber, because uh, if it breaks, it's going to be your fault. But when you're, when you're mesakin, uh, anything in the bias, then these are tikune shechina, and the term of the word quoted the psukim of smoile tach zaroishi, vimino etichabekeni, where basically you bring the Yetzirah into the right side. That is the sixth parak. We go to number seven. Now, Tiferes. Tiferes is undoubtedly Torah. Now, Tiferes, you have to be careful when it comes to Torah not to be arrogant because you're going to cause harm. Because if you're arrogant, you're going to cause Tiferes to rise up and therefore you want Tiferes to influence, go down and influence Malchus. So therefore, says the Talmud of Arah, what if you're arrogant over your Talmidim, you cause Tiferes to be arrogant abo- above Netzach and Hoid, which are Limudei Hashem. When you teach with love, you cause Tiferes to lower itself and influence Netzach and Hoid. Number two, one who is arrogant to an Ani, causes Tiferes to rise above the Ani, who is Yisoid. You want to have tolerance to the Ani, that will cause Tiferes to influence Yisoid. Now, one who is arrogant over an Amah Oretz causes Tiferes to be arrogant above Malchus. Am Oretz refers to Malchus. So if you call an Amah Oretz Chamoirim, one will not be Zoycha to, the, uh, to have a Ben Tamar Chacham. But you want to deal with Malchus Lafi Anias Daitai. Now, when one converses in Torah, you should have in mind you're being Mesach in the Shechina, you want to, you're beautifying Tiferes, and if you have a Machlokes, it should be L'Shem Shamayim, and one who benefits from Torah causes a blemish to this Midah. But when you learn L'Shem Shamayim, then we say Ashrei Chelkai. Number eight, 
Netzach and Hoid. Now, um, some tikkun, tikkunim apply both to Netzach and Hoid. Some are specific either to Netzach or to Hoid. When one assists Loim De Torah financially or Bemaisa or being mechazik them or supplying them with their needs, so this is mechazik and mesake, netzach and hoid. You don't, you don't want to disparage your teaching so they don't slacken off in their avodah Hashem. You praise them and this encourages them. You provide them with their needs. Sfarim, uh, whatever is done to strengthen Torah, you're strengthening these two midos which are called machzike at Torah. Furthermore, learn from everybody. Torah is not... Um, Torah is not going to be nikna from only one Rebbe, but when one learns from everybody, you become the Merkava, like it says over here, to Netzach and Hoid, and the teacher is Teferas. When you learn Chumash, that's the right side Netzach. When you learn Mishnah, that's Hoid on the left side. When you learn Gemara, you are being kind of both. Yesoid. Be careful from not only Arayas, but speech that's not about Arayas, but could lead to Herhurim, and obviously it goes without saying not to speak divrei nevala, even a pure word that could bring improper thoughts, one should be careful. Al titein espich alachdias besarecha. Just like Hashem's bow is arched above, and it only there, Yesoid, is to influence Malchus, so too somebody should only inf- um, use the, the um, Yesoid to influence Ishtai. Okay, Midah number 9, Malchus. Malchus is less like me klum. So you want to make yourself like an ani without a- any arrogance, especially when you stand before your Creator and beseeching. Even if you're wealthy, you should realize nothing stays with you. Consider yourself forsaken, and especially during tefillah, which we said is a segula nefla. Now, the, um, this is the meat of David Amelch. David Amelch says, Ki yachid va'ani ani. No one can even, no one in your family could help you. The, the furthest they come with you is to the grave. Now, the next part of Malchus is exile yourself, l'shem shamayim, to become a kavla shechina, and minimize the kalim that you bring with you as Riban Sham, when he, the shechina zengos, does not have his kalim with, with him. Furthermore, another aspect of Malchus is fear Hashem himself, and his hashgacha, and ruining, and fear ruining his para, palace, and realizing that it pushes away the shechina. So, to think about these three things, which correctly over here we wrote, they're really four. Number one, Hashem is greater than any force, stronger than the lion, the bear, the terrorist, stronger than Fauci, stronger than COVID, and much stronger than Biden. So, therefore, in those aspects, um, one, one is uh, scared of. So, certainly, Hashem, uh, one should be afraid of Hashem himself. Just because Hashem is tolerant, that is not a reason why. Um, one should be any less afraid of Hashem. Now, fear knowing that He has all-encompassing watch and hashkacha, so even though uh, we know that a, a, a Evid is afraid in the presence of the Master, we know that uh, we're always under Hashem's gaze. Now, uh, since a person's Hashem is rooted on high, so his actions affect the different spheroids and the palace of Hashem, therefore be careful that your sin damages and dirties Hashem's palace. Now, we know Hashem wants to reside down below, but when a person does an Aver, He causes and He pushes the Shekhinah away, one should be afraid of these four things. Now, accustoming oneself with Malchus, you want to make sure the Shekhinah always clings to you. Now, before one is married, obviously the Shekhinah is not with a person. Nekeva brings the Shekhinah. Man needs to be situated between two Nekevas, one's wife, who you give Sherek Sus and Aina, and the Shechina above, so the Nekeva above is the Shechina, and the Nekeva below is one's wife. Just like Tiferes is in between Bina and Malchus, so too one should be between, be between Akash Baruch and one's wife. Now one may need to separate from his wife for one of three reasons, right? His wife's Anida, or to learn Torah during the week, or someone's traveling on the road. So during these times the Shechina clings to a person, so a person is not abandoned, but the way you keep the Shechina with you is Tfilas Haderach and Limanat Torah. Now, one who wants to unite with the Shechina and make sure it never departs, needs to adorn oneself with beautiful adornments and clothing and beautiful midos and accept to be learning and being mekav the all mitzvahs. Then you give the Shechina She'er Ksus and Aina, which is, She'er is Taramas and Toivim, Ksus 
is covering Gevura, so there's no element of Yetzirah in one's mitzvah. It's also the time says by wearing towels and tefillin, that is a, a ksus. And Oina is set, designated times to do mitzvahs, namely, like it says over here, saying Krishma or your regular times for learning, that is, so to speak, the Oina with Hashem. By the way, it's a very beautiful thought. Let's say a person has a set time to learn every day, one should think that this is Mamish, a time that one could be Mizdabik to the Shechina, it's Kibiyachal Oina to the Shechina. And finally, the 10th chapter, the Sphira of Malchus, and that is the term of the verse says that a, a wondrous teaching taught by the Zara Kodesh Parashas Bereshis, which the term of the verse calls an Eitzah, a uh, wondrous Eitzah, is you want to connect to either the dominant uh, sphere of the time. So nighttime, the sphere is Malchus. So the way you counter out Malchus of Misa is by accepting all Malchus Shemaim. Then you arise at midnight. Midnight, you wash your hands, you make Berchazat Torah, and as the morning star ascends and one goes to Shul, you want to be Makasher to the three Avais, B'machshava, B'dibor by saying, Vani B'rev Chascha, V'yisecha, Chascha is Avram, Eshtach Havel, Hechagotcher is Yitzchak. Speaking about Yitzchak, join us tonight at 8.30, we have an amazing share about Yitzchak Avinu. And number three, Bira Secha, Yaakov Avinu. So that's B'dibor. And then B'maisa is when you bow down. Now I'll tell you the truth. I keep on forgetting the third part. I, I, when I come to Shul, I try to think, to be Makash the Avos, I say, Vani Rav and I always forget the third part to bow, but I had a little bit of a Nechama, because the Torah of the Bar does say, the Maisa is either bowing or coming in. So at least if, if you don't bow, you still made it into the Shul, but one should try to do the full Maisa, which is bowing. Entering the Shul and bowing. Now, there is, um, before Tefillah, one stands in the Shul with their mouth, as a source of Yesoid. From there you ascend to the secret of Torah, the essence of Torah, and you connect in the essence of Teferas until Mincha. So here are the various times. Shachris is Chesed, during the day is Teferas. Mincha is Gvura. Night again, you're back to Malchus the way we started. Now, a person should attach himself to the Shechina during one's meals, doing Chesed to that um, poor soul. Mazoin is a mystical word. Zon is the numerical value of 57, the two names of Hashem, Yud Vavke and Kel. I would like one day, B'li Nedr, to give a shear on the significance of the number 57. Remind me one day. Now, um, the Talmud Devarah ended by saying, this idea of being aware of the, da- of the dominant spheres in Eitzah, Kerlele, Sliskasha, Adam, Tan, Bektusha, Vlayachsar, um, Itur Ashkina Me'al Roshai. But the, to sum up Tamar Devara in one sentence, is that is, a man was created in the image of Hashem, and therefore every thought, act, and, and saying should uh, strive to emulate HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and we were created in the image of the Ten Spheroids, and uh, by studying Tamar Devara, one really elevates their entire entity. So thank you everybody so much for joining. Be'ezos Hashem Yisbarach. Monday we will uh, try to start the new Limud, uh, Thursdays now we are not going to be continuing in the Seder, so it will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, but the good news is Thursday there's going to be a different thing, the Shimru project of Hilchai Shabbos um, is going to be on Thursdays and it will probably be earlier in the afternoon, more like 2.33. And in terms of the timing of this, stay tuned. Hope to see everybody tonight at 8.30. Thanks for bearing with us. Uh, not everything in Tarm of the Bar was so easy. Thank you, Rav Nassim Welder, for putting together this um, masterful summary. I highly recommend everyone print it out. And you go for a walk, and you can review Tarm of the as often as you can. And Be'ezus Hashem, Hadrin Allah, Tarm of the Bar, We hope that Tarm of returns to us very soon. Thank you, everybody. And Agun Shabbos, Kol Tov. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.